十一二三四五六七。I've had a chance to put this circuit together now in the simulator on the Mac. This is using a program called iCircuit. You can see here iCircuit, and very handy this because for doing analog and digital simulations, it it just saves so much time and not needing to、uh, actually wire things up on the bench. Although you know that usually comes second when I do this sort of work, and.、Um, Looking at this, then what I've got, I've got a、uh, AC signal coming into my three-transistor amplifier, and I've put a switch in series with that, so that I've been able to isolate the AC. The reason I did that is、um, I've got here this、uh, yellow, purple, green, and like red, and、um, and these represent the four oscilloscope traces in the simulator. And if that AC signal is applied. I can't get steady state DC values, and that's really what I want to do when I start analysing this circuit. I need to be looking at steady state, and、um, one of the first things I'd do, I'd go to the、uh, output stage, I'd check that I've got actually 12 volts supplied to the circuit, and in fact, there's my 12 volts. I've put a couple of meters up here,、um, 12 volts, and I'd look at the collector on that, and I'm not happy with what I see. I've got 8.46 volts. Um, there on that collector, it's a pretty bad design because if that was midpoint biased for the Q point, I'd expect to get six volts DC at that point, and、um, the problem has been caused by、uh, I would say here that we have too small a value for the 18K. If that had been a bit bigger. Lifted the base、uh, voltage up would have more base current, which would pull that collector voltage down further. So、um, it'd be a choice of changing this resistor at the top, this resistor here, or this resistor here. To give you an example,、uh, 270 ohms. If I knock that down in value, and I'm just guessing here, 120 ohms.、Um, straight away, I've got 6.63 volts there now,、uh, sitting on the collector. And it's not only a case of、um, getting the correct collector voltage to set the Q point.、Uh, when that Q point was set to eight volts, I would have had a lower current flowing through that. Now, at the moment, I've got two point four six milli amps traveling down through that、uh, resistor. And little re in this transistor, the AC dynamic resistance is going to be determined by say 25 millivolts divided by the 2.46 milliamps. And if if I change that back to 270 ohms again, and、um, and then I have a look at the current at that point, now I've only got 1.63 milliamps. So. Um, I'm going to have a lot smaller little re with the smaller resistor there, so therefore my gain is going to be bigger in that transistor if I've got a smaller resistor there and more current going through the collector. Show you what I mean. If I、um, put the switch on and、uh, look, <laughs> waveforms wobble all over the place, but、um, I'll just. Pause that for a moment. I've got、uh, on the red, which is the output here, looking AC wise, because it is capacitively coupled. I've got 320 millivolts.、Um, that would be、uh, peak, peak to peak, peak to peak. Yes, PP.、Uh, looking there, and if I go now and I change that resistor to back to that 120 ohms, I'll do that, and we'll see what happens. Oops! Just move our circuit back down.、Um, 270 will make that 120 ohms. 120, and now we'll、uh, run the simulation again. And now look what I've got. I've got 565 millivolts peak to peak sitting at the output. And、uh, of course, that's floating around. You can see the six volts there is moving around. That's what I said before. I really, when I analyse these circuits, I like to have steady state DC、um, because with the AC signal being applied, the DC is jumping all over the place, of course. But it served to prove a point here that、um, when the Q point was wrong. Uh, set wrongly in that circuit, we had、uh, lousy gain.、Uh, I've almost doubled the gain、uh, by changing that value resistor. 
Look, I'll put the value resistor back because uh, this does, this circuit does match a fault finding panel which we use here in uh, TAFE New South Wales. And uh, no doubt it was done that way, maybe to demonstrate this fact. I'm not sure why it was done that way. It was done uh, by my predecessors many, many years ago. So I'll put that back to 270 ohms. Note when I put it back what happens down here, um, the 565 will immediately drop. We're down to 320 millivolts peak to peak and uh, the voltage at that point now we're back up around that 8.5 volts uh, DC quiescent voltage on the collector and the disadvantage of that is not only have we got um, poorer gain uh, in this stage but now I can't get a symmetrical swing of the AC signal around the collector uh, stage so anyway look that's Poorly designed, I'd say. Why they've done that, I, I really don't know. Uh, let's have a look at some other features on the circuit. I'll um, disable the AC input again. I'll open that up. And uh, you can see now all my AC has vanished from my four test points. Um, I've got uh, here a common collector circuit, also called an emitter follower. Um, I've got 5.37 volts sitting on the base. You'd expect to have that because um, I've got a uh, series voltage uh, dropping resistor here. So 12 volts sitting on my final stage, 11.43 volts uh, sitting at this stage of the circuit. And in fact, there's probably another capacitor there. Uh, I might just go ahead and add that in to make that circuit look a little bit happier so there and uh, probably we need a couple of earths on here too so we might put a bit of an earth there and we might put a bit of an earth uh, on this one as well earth and uh, we might have to move him up a little bit and just bring that earth in there like that so this is a, a decoupling um, stage here and the purpose of this is that if I had any um, harm or uh, variations from larger current swings in the output stage, I'm not going to have the same variations happening here and especially at the front end of a amplifier with multiple stages where we've got quite sensitive components at the front I do not want voltage uh, variations happening there because that will cause distortion in the further stages down the track um, so 11.43 volts 100k 100k about a half of that and that's what we saw there about 5.3 volts um, and of course emit a follower action here I'm going to get 4.8 volts which is about 0.6 or 0.7 volts uh, less than that base voltage appearing there. DC blocking capacitor going to the final stage because we don't want to change that um, uh, voltage that we've got set on the base there, which is about 1.1 volt, something like that, I'm guessing. And the front end, the FET. Uh, the FET has quite large value resistors here, 5.6 million ohms, 1 million ohms. Um, 1.7 microamps of current traveling down through there and about 1.7 volts uh, coming into the gate. And on the drain of the FET, uh, it looks like I've got about 7.5 volts. Again, that's not really well biased. I would have expected the Q point of that to be around about half of the 11 volts, so about 5.5 volts. Um, the source on the FET about 4 volts and of course uh, as I said in the very first video on this um, series working out the gain and working out the voltages around the FET a little bit difficult because we've got um, something called transconductance here to uh, figure with and we'll be doing a graph drawing a graph for this in the uh, in the next video um, again, from the drain, we've got a decoupling capacitor going into the um, DC blocking capacitor, I should say, coming into the uh, base circuit on the following stage. Uh, decoupling capacitor here, or bypass capacitor here, rather, and a bypass capacitor here, because we don't want any AC uh, subtracting from the gain at this point or this point here. Um, this circuit up the front, this is a, um, a T-type attenuator 
And uh, I did run the figures on that. I'll also explore that in one of the later videos. I think from memory that had about 40 dB of attenuation. So um, that allows to put in like a fairly large signal here. Um, I think I had that set for a 100 millivolts peak. This particular simulator gives me a peak voltage. So it's 200 millivolts peak to peak. And then at that point there I had uh, something much, much less. Let me just turn that on and see what we had. Um, close 200 millivolts peak to peak at that point and at that point there we've only got 12.8 um, millivolts peak to peak so that's a pretty big reduction uh, from 200 millivolts down to 12 millivolts uh, what's the gain on this first transistor this uh, field effect transistor well I've got 12.8 um, millivolts peak to peak going into the gate and you can see here purple, uh, purple, I've got 47 millivolts uh, peak to peak happening here on the, uh, on the drain. So that's got a gain. I thought when I first did the specs on this, it had a gain of about 2.4 times. But uh, that seems to have a gain of about four times, in fact, dividing that value by that value. And the gain that we see here, um, purple to green, um, you can see green there is 46.59, uh, purple is 47. This is an emitter follower. It's got a voltage, um, well, it hasn't got a voltage gain. It's got a unity gain, they call it, and it works out to about 0 0.99 times. Um, I think in the first video I call it 0.95, and I like to do that because um, I like to work with the lowest possible value uh, in circuit when I'm doing fault finding. So uh, if you call that 0.95 or 0.99, you're right, right on the money for that one. All right, so looking at the final stage here, we need to determine uh, the collector current to be able to work out little IRE and then work out the gain. So we need to work out the base voltage, and it's going to be a ratio between these two resistors. It'll be 18K divided by 168K times 12 volts. And I'll be lazy, I'll just have a look at that. And uh, what do we got there? About one point something volt, you know, very low voltage. If I uh, was to open that resistor, we can get an exact value for what that is, of course. And uh, there we've got 1.027 volts sitting on the base. Uh, if we subtract uh, 0.6 or 0.7 from that, we're going to have 439.12 millivolts. And if we divide that by the 270 ohm resistor, that would give me, and the simulator's worked that out for me, which is really good, 1.63 milliamps uh, traveling down through there. Now to work out the uh, dynamic emitter resistance of that, we need to use 0 0.025 volts, that's 25 millivolts, 27 millivolts, 30 millivolts, depends on the textbook that you use. I'll use 25 millivolts, so 25 millivolts divided by um, 1.63 milliamps and uh, so I've got a uh, little RE of oh, I get about 15 ohms of uh, little RE there and then to work out the gain we need to get the uh, AC collector resistance which is going to be 2.2k in parallel with 4.7k and that's going to work out to around about 1500 ohms so 1500 divided by 15 ohms little re because this is fully bypassed i should have a gain of a hundred times but wow i've got nothing like that because i've only got a gain of six times i've got um, 315 millivolts peak to peak on the output and i've got uh, an input of 46 let's call that 50 300 there's a gain of six times yet the maths tells me i've got a gain of a hundred times what's gone wrong well, I think that we need to explore this a little bit further and it's going to always be to do with the bypass capacitor. The bypass capacitor is 10 microfarads. We're using 50 hertz. If we work out the capacitive reactance of that, which is 1 on 2 pi FC, uh, that'll work out to about 320 ohms, something like that. I know 50 hertz is such a common value here in uh, Australia, where uh, in the United States it's 60 hertz, of course, but 50 hertz with 10 microfarads, 320 odd ohms in parallel with 270 ohms. Hey, it's about 150 
ohms there. So I've got to add that 150 ohms to little rc, which is 15 ohms. That's 165 ohms. 165 ohms into uh, 1500 odd ohms. And we're certainly going to be more in the ballpark. So this is a frequency dependent circuit because of the small value that I've stuck in there. And I can prove this. If I uh, change the value of that, I think the actual simulator board, the, the real board rather, had 47 microfarads there. So 47 microfarads. And then uh, I'll run the uh, oscilloscope waveforms again, and you'll see this 315 millivolts peak to peak jump up dramatically. Here we go. I suppose we better turn that on. That's more like it. So uh, 930 millivolts peak to peak. It's jumped up by a factor of three times now by changing the value of that resistor. I'll just do it in real time. Uh, 47 back down to 10 microfarads. And then you can see down to 300 millivolts peak to peak. And uh, back up to 47 again. 47 microfarads. 930 millivolts peak to peak so um we're still going to you know unless you've got a really huge value there at a low frequency like 50 hertz um you're not going to uh, get the full gain out of that transistor because it's not going to be um bypassed as well as we would have liked it to be uh, another way of increasing the gain there of course we could have just got the 50 hertz and bumped that up to 150 hertz and if we do that in fact what do we want 150 hertz 150 hertz and the waveform is looking a bit sad there but um 2.72 volts we appear to have there uh, on the output now so it's made a dramatic difference uh, to the uh, result because now that at 150 hertz the uh, xc of that capacitor would be very very low if i take that down to 100 hertz 100 hertz, uh, 1.95 volts peak to peak, and uh, take that back down to 50 hertz again, and we're now back down uh, below 1 volt, 930 millivolts peak to peak. So certainly a very frequency dependent circuit, uh, as we'd expect here with a common emitter amplifier, and uh, the size of that capacitor there uh, having a large impact on the um, on the output gain of the circuit. So the overall gain then with 50 hertz, 47 microfarads, we've got uh, 930 millivolts. Uh, in the yellow here, we've got uh, 12. We've got a gain of about 75 times based on that 930 divided by 12.8, a gain of about 75 times. But that gain, of course, is from the gate on the FET to the uh, output of the entire three-stage amplifier. If I was to look at the uh, gain from this point here to the output, we'd find that it's not as much because I've got a attenuator pad sitting here at the front of the amplifier. If I do in fact do that, add another oscilloscope sample there, 197, so say 200 millivolts peak to peak, uh, coming in at that point there and of course 900 coming out so I've only got a gain there at the moment of about five times in the entire amplifier from the beginning of the attenuator pad to the output of the amplifier. So anyway the whole purpose of this video was to do the analysis, a quick analysis of what's happening in the amplifier. Um, we've done that and we've still got a lot more videos to go yet to break this right down and in fact look at all of those 12 different faults that are going to be injected to this three-stage amplifier on the actual fault finding panel. This is Greg Moore for TAFE New South Wales. Oh, 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 oh.